Yeah, good afternoon. This is Jim from jagfx.com. It is Monday the 29th of June 2020. This is a look at my daily charts on the high probability. This is my weekly analysis video where I go over all the pairs I'm looking at on the daily charts. So it's um, there's a bit, in, bit of construction noise. So it's been very <laughs> difficult to do videos, but we're on to it. It's lunchtime. They're all having a sleep, so it's good. Um, now, this is my watch list on the right. This is all the pairs I'm trading. If it's highlighted in blue, it means there's trades on. No highlight, no trade. Orange is something I've done today, so I'll touch on them. I'll look at all pairs anyway, but I'll, I'll just these ones are new today. Um, now, just remember that all my trades are recorded on a shared spreadsheet on Google Drive. Everyone's got access to that spreadsheet. There's a link to it in the description of the video, so you're more than welcome to check that out. And like I always say, everyone's more than welcome to join the JagFX private Facebook group or the Telegram groups. I, dis I do call all the trades on the daily charts in there. I'm also trading the 12-hour charts, which are more monitored on my YouTube channel. And I'm doing some other stuff on 4-hour, 6-hour, 8-hour and 12-hour and daily on four other pairs at the moment, just trying something different. Then anyway, wait. let's go get into this. We'll go through each pair. We'll start with the AusCAD. I'll just explain the setup. Most of you who watch my videos know what it is by now. But um, generally, I'll write in here what the pair is and any notes I make are all on, normally on the chart. You'll see it. Profit to date is in dollars, and that's from when I first started trading the daily charts based on a 0 0.02 lot, so 20 cents a pip roughly. Um, You'll see the price candlestick chart, obviously, daily chart, three moving averages, 240 LMA, 100 EMA, 50 EMA. They're just to give me an idea of the way trend's going. In this case, trend's heading up. As you can see, the moving averages are spreading and stacked to the upside. If you see green trend lines, normally I'm, means I'm looking at possible bullish divergence or bullish divergence has been confirmed. Red trend lines, bearish divergence. Got two types of um, divergences, we've got hidden and regular. So in this case here, it would just be a basic um, regular, diver uh, sorry, hidden divergence, hidden bullish divergence, possibly setting up, hasn't been confirmed yet. Blue trend lines, just some sort of resistance areas or support levels or other trend lines um, I've drawn that's something that gets my attention. Uh, this green and red dots on the price chart is called the QMP filter. It's not actually an indicator as such, it's more just a visual aid. Now, I'll show you how that's come about. You'll see this indicator in the middle here, it's called the MACD Platinum. It's just a zero lag MACD, so it just, it oscillates around the zero level. That's the zero level here. Generally, when it's above the zero level, I'm looking to sell. When it's below the zero level, I'm looking to buy. Now, this indicator is called the QQE Advanced. I don't normally display it on my chart, but I'm just going to show you. It's it's just two lines across, and when they're when it's in sync with the MACD Platinum, when these dots appear on the MACD Platinum, that's actually a cross between the signal and the MACD line. Um, it gives a see how here the cross has been confirmed, and the MACD Platinum's been dots been confirmed. Puts the this red dot on the price chart. So basically, on the open, the next candle I'm taking a sell. If I was to come and take that sell. Doesn't always happen on the same candle. I'll see if I can give an example. So here's your red dot on the MACD platinum here. QMP filter dot's not up and up until here because there's your cross on the QQE advanced. So all this is is a a, um, a combination of two indicators when they're in sync. So it just makes it a bit easier to spot things than that. So that's all that is. So there's nothing on the Aussie CAD. Let's have a look. Uh, also, one other thing you'll see, I've got multiple trades on here, all right? So uh, I've had a few people bring it to my attention. They're probably not, I do what they call hedging. Um, I'm going to cut down on the hedging technique from uh, the daily charts and just more concentrate on, on the 12-hour charts. It's, it's not for everyone. Not everyone can do it, depending on what jurisdiction your broker's in. Uh, basically, it means buying and selling at the same time on the same pair, which not everyone can do. It is high-risk trading. I do it. I'm comfortable doing it. But I can understand that people 
are probably a bit confused by it all and it's probably a bit too much on the daily charts. So what I'm going to do is I'm cutting back on that. I'll still do it every now and then, every now and then if I see something that appeals to me. However, once all these sequences that I'm currently in with hedge trades are finished, I'll go back to the more traditional, placing a stop with each trade, etc. So if you can't understand me, I'm talking too quick, or you just want to read the video, just pause the video or, or slow it down and you can read my notes. I keep pretty good notes. And you can see there's a lot of trades happening here. You can read all this here. Um, sell trades are normally designated by a red vertical line, dashed line with a solid red horizontal line. So that's a sell in there. Buys are blue. So there's a buy in there. Next sell. So you can see there's plenty of trades happening here. Yellow dashed line is a break even level. So B slash E's break even, and there's that break even. So I've generally, basically here I've taken, a, you can read my notes, of sell and why I've taken it, followed by buy, followed by another sell, buy, you know, so there's multiple trades. I've got to get down to this yellow level for a break even overall. Now this is, this is a hedge trade, uh, hedging's involved in this setup. A gray line is just a warning signal. And the reason it's there is because I've got a green dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level, so I'm looking to buy there. Not yet. I've got to wait for confirmation. Uh, I've got to wait for a green dot on the QMP filter for a start. Then I have a look at where price is compared to the moving averages, just the normal rules. And this green trend line is possible hidden bullish divergence setting up. And I love my hidden divergence, as you all know. So it's getting... Um, and what would happen here if they say there's a buy signal tomorrow, which is quite possible, then I would take a hedge buy on this trade. I've got a couple of options actually. I could actually, this sell trade up here, I could close that if price stayed below it, take my profit and add it to this. Well, add it to this is actually one I'm in negative. Um, add it to that, take the profit from that trade, then take a new buy trade for this sequence, then start a new sequence also because I'm below the zero level on the MACD Platinum, so it'd be a valid buy signal and I could add to it that way. So there's, there's options and I'll think about that tomorrow. I normally have a bit of a game plan in my mind when I go through these charts anyway. So that's the Oz Swiss. Uh, Australian dollar, Japanese yen, no trades happening at the moment. You can see a big resistance level up here, it's even noted. Um, You've got possible hidden bullish divergence setting up, which I love to see. You can see here, lower lows on the MACD Platinum and higher lows on price. It's not confirmed yet. No green dot on the QMP filter. Ideally, I'd want to see price come back down a bit lower to the MAs, but we'll wait and see what happens. Oz New Zealand, um, big resistance level. You can see support. Uh, support level here. You can see there's a trend line just drawn in, something that got my attention. Look for a break, which I took a trade on and it didn't work. Um, so S1, S2, sequence one, sequence two. Where they're marked on the chart is where they commenced. I could take multiple trades on the same candle. Now, again, just pause the video, read my notes. I've got uh, You'll see overall break even, which means all trades. So that overall break even is off the chart somewhere. It's up here somewhere. Don't worry about that too much. I'm more concentrating on what I'm doing. Sequence one, break even, not applicable. It's hedged. Sequence two is a buy, sell, buy. So that's that's its break even level is this yellow dash line here. Um, what else is there on here? Oh, this green line is just normally, if I draw a green line, it's normally a number of significance. In this case, it's parity, 1.000. So you can see how price has bounced off it and straight up. There would have been, I reckon there would have been thousands of orders to buy on that level. <laughs> I wish I had. A, but anyway, um, so we're in a few trades here. Aussie USD, again, big green lines. This is a 70 cent level, that's a 60 cent level. Two big numbers on the Aussie. Um, I'm in multiple trades. Again, there's a warning thing here, a line, possible hidden bullish divergence setting up. 
Ideally, I'd like to see price come back closer to the MAs. I'd like to see price come down to this yellow line because that's my overall break even for all of these trades. So I'm sort of stuck in a bit of a rut here at the moment. But I like this big number with a resistance level. Look, you know, see how price has come up to the 70 cent, up to the 70 cent, and down to 60 cent. So yeah, they're big numbers. Got a few trades to get through there. CAD Swiss. Now, this is one I made a mess of. Um, and I'm stuck in five buy trades over here. See these five blue lines? I haven't drawn the horizontal ones. Don't worry about them. That's these these five trades here. Uh, I've dropped the ball somehow. <laughs> stuck in them. In the meantime, so the good thing is with these trades, they've got big positive swap on the buy side. So I'm not losing any money on the um, the overnight interest rate, the swap. So that's good. So I can just leave them dangling. It's a slow moving pair. Generally, it slow moves. Then you get coronavirus, and it's gone against me. So in the meantime, I'm just trying to work what's on the right-hand side of the chart and add to my profit here, and eventually I'll start closing these trades out if I don't, if price doesn't get up there. That's the overall break-even. It's the yellow line, so it's a long way from that. So in the meantime, I'm concentrating, as I said, on sequence two, which is at the break-even just about now. I just might give it another, see how we push down a bit lower. MACD platinum's below the zero level. I've got some options to consider here probably in the next day or so. So, yeah, overall break evens all the way up here. Break even for the sequence two is in this yellow line here. So, yeah. CAD yen, nothing doing. Had this sort of resistance support level drawn. Possible um, hidden bullish divergence setting up. We're sort of, that's why the Warning lines there, MACD platinum, green dot below the zero level. Nothing happening at the moment. Swiss franc, Japanese yen, took a buy trade this morning. Um, stop in place, because oh, that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> There's no divergence supporting it. It's just a with the trend trade. Price has gone up, hit this sort of a resistance level, pulled back down, come close to the 50. MAs are stacked to the upside. Buy signal this morning, just take it. Hopefully we can get up near back to this resistance level. In the meantime, the MACD platinum will probably go through the zero level, close out half, move my stop up. That's the plan. That's, the, so that's a new buy trade on the Swiss franc Japanese yen. Euro Aussie. This is one of my pain in the ass pairs. Um, sequence one is a sell, which was up here. You can see my notes here. That red dotted line is a stop for that trade. So that trade's a standalone trade. That's a, a sell with a lock in profit. And we start sequence two, which is sort of this stuff here with a regular bullish divergence. And you can read my notes up there. We've got two break even levels, one for overall, which is in there, and one for the just the sequence two, which will be the one that starts on the sequence two, the top yellow line. So I just need this thing to push up a little bit and get rid of all these trades. Euro CAD, this is a sideways nightmare. <laughs> uh, well, look, you can read my notes again. Buy, sell, buy, sell, buy. And we're trying to head up to this yellow line. It's just been stuck sideways for a, a few weeks now. It's, and this is the daily chart. It's not a big mover. Then you've got Corona. Then we're back to... Uh, Euro Swiss in a sell, stop and place just below the entry, possibly setting up for um, hidden bullish divergence there again. You can see it's sort of setting up nicely. Just need the green QMP filter dot to push up. So we're doing all right there. Euro pound, nothing happening at the moment. Uh, it's just in a slow uptrend. Yeah, I think I might have got out of that. Tr oh, I didn't. Not sure if I took that trade or got out of it. Doing all right, making a few dollars on the euro pound. It's not the best pair to trade at times, but sometimes it does give you good profit. Euro yen in a sell up here, stop and place, looking to set up again for a possible buy. Again, hidden bullish divergence. You can see there's a lot of correlation between a lot of these patterns and on the, some of these pairs. So you can read there, locking in profit, so it's all right. Euro New Zealand. 
Um, one sequence, just trying to get up to this yellow line. You can see all my trades there. It's just going sideways at the moment. Uh, break evens up. You can see it there. It's not. It's. It looks like a long way, but on this pair, it's not that far. This pair can move when it wants to. Again, you know, like it's not a bad pair to trade. Then you get stuck in Corona. <laughs> just makes it a little bit tougher, but we're getting there. Just got to push up, and the MACD is above the zero level now, so I'm, I may look to take a hedge. Uh, hedge sell on the sequence one. If but if price went up above a buy, I may close one of my buys, sort of thing. If, if I can get some more profit, then then pivot the bias to the downside and take an extra sell trade. So there's always options. Euro USD. You can see you saw that green dot on the QMP filter in the MACD Platinum. With Trading View, when you flick through the, the charts or the different time frames, you might see a dot will appear. It's good. I like to see it actually because it gives me a heads up. Tomorrow, I know for a f if price stated as it is now, by the time the new candle came tomorrow, I know there's going to be a buy signal there. Um, so I can plan ahead and see. Well, what am I going to do? I'm going to take a buy. I might close this sell and pivot to the buy side. You know, so there's it's there's options, but I'm in a, a sequence of trades here. There's my break in. Got very close. And I'll probably it just sort of bounced off it. And the MACD platinum wasn't through the zero level, so I wasn't taking any action. And it's gone straight against me. And it's now it's just bounced up and it's bounced back down towards it. And now it's heading back up again. MACD platinum's below the zero level, so I'm looking to buy anyway. So what I might do tomorrow if that buy signal keeps stays underneath this red cell here, which is the third cell, I could close that for a small profit, add that to my profit and pivot to the buy side, take a buy in here, which then that sequence then looking to buy, then I could take a second buy trade on sequence two or something like that. Pound Aussie, uh, this sequence one is a, oh, what have I got here? Oh yeah, uh, sequence one, buy, hedge sell, second buy, second hedge sell, so break even, not applicable, is hedged. Then sequence two is a sell here, that's this one here. MACD platinum still above the zero level, starting to draw trend lines in, looking for potential bullish divergence. And I, all I do is adjust these trend lines every day until if then and if it goes down like that, it's no longer valid, just delete it. But I just keep them on there because it's all about preparation, thinking ahead, seeing what's coming up. It's a good thing about keeping records on the charts, you know where, where you're at. So it's always strongly suggested. Pound CAD in a cell. Stop and place, again, possibly setting up for hidden bullish divergence. Um, sorry, that's um, not hidden, that's regular. Higher, high, higher low on the oscillator, lower high, so on the um, lower low on the price. It's probably, it's not a trade I'd probably take. Uh, oh, yeah. It, I probably would. It's I don't like where the MACD Platinum is at the moment. It's, it's right on the zero level, so it's a tough one to take. If if a buy signal was pre presented now, I'm talking about. But we're in a sell. We've already taken some profit. Not too bad. All right, pound Swiss. Sell up here, stop and place here, locking in profit, which is good. And MACD Platinum's below the zero level. And we've got a red dot at the moment, so nothing you're too concerned about. Pound New Zealand, now this is probably one that is giving me grief. It's been a fair trade. Every time I do one of these videos, I always point out these candles in here. This is a daily chart. Look at this, Corona at the peak. When's that? Oh, March. So yeah, so let's have a look. Sequence one, uh, my notes are all over the place here because I need some space to <laughs> write them. Sequence one, plenty happening. Got a break in uh, top yellow line, I think it is. Yeah, so you can read that. There's a lot of trade. Sequence two, uh, it's got its break even too. Sequence three's got a break in. They're all up there, but the problem is price is going down. So it's caused me a fair bit of grief, and it's making uh, my overall break even nine hundred. So it's a might be that one there. 
So it hasn't got, this thing can move up there, no worries in a heartbeat, but it's been slowly heading down. Yeah, I just gotta try and work my way out of it. Looked at any time I can take some profit, add it to my profit, which has been pretty good actually. But in the meantime, it's caused me some grief, this pair. Just keep on the grind on it. Pound yen, sell trade up here, stop and place, which is good. Oh, actually, two sell trades, sequence one and sequence two, which is great. And making some good money on the pound yen. You just have to, once, if we get a, um, and there's hidden bullish divergence starting to form, hasn't been confirmed, like a lot of the pairs, if I do get a buy signal here, look, it'd be a high risk buy trade because uh, we're going into the MAs. But I like the fact that we've got hidden, possibly hidden bullish divergence. MACD platinum's below the zero level, so it is a, even though it's a high risk trade and I've got two cells on, it, it, this, is, this is where I would be hedging, but it's not hedging as in the sense I'm hedging to protect a position. It's, it's a hedging because I've already got a sell on and it's getting it's already protected with a stop loss. So if I took a buy here, then I'm protected somewhat by that previous sells, if that makes sense. Pound USD, this is another one of my problem ones from way back here, which is not too bad actually. I made a lot of trades from a long time ago and I'm just adding, trying to chip away. You can see my profit, it's huge on this pair. I went in big, five times my normal base lot of 0 0.02. I don't know why I did that, but I'm now in this position where I've got to try and work my way out of it. My break even's down here. All I'm doing is chipping away now at trying to get to one of these break-even levels. If you've been following my videos, you would have seen it's been there, it's been up here, it's been there, it's been up there. So just depend on where I'm at in the sequence. But we're getting there slowly. Um, and sequence two, I keep on adding to the right-hand side of the chart. So you can see sequence two here is a sell. And it's come down nicely. They've already closed half, put a stop in place. So... Now looking, the MACD platinum's below the zero level, so I'll probably pivot this to the buy side. So this, for example, this six cell, which would be this one in here. If it, if I do get a buy signal, then I close that cell, take that profit, add it to my profit, then pivot to the buy side and push, and my, my break even will be up here and push back up and also take a new sequence to buy trade. So just a matter of grinding away. New Zealand CAD, uh, this morning I just put a stop in place. I took this sell a few days ago, I think it was back on the 17th of June. There was a sell trade taken here, it was a high risk trade into the, you can see my notes, high risk is against the trend. Uh, there's a resistance level here, which I do like, so I just put a stop in this morning above that resistance level there, you can read it there. So just protecting it, I've made some good money on the New Zealand CAD, surprisingly. So it's not a pair that's has been kind to me. Uh, New Zealand Swiss, nothing happening at the moment, possibly setting up a hidden bullish divergence. You can see the usual <laughs> setup there. Again, need confirmation. Right, let's get through these. New Zealand Japanese Yen, this is one I'm getting close to thinking about closing out completely. I mean, multiple trades. One sequence you can see. Uh, just not down, I've, I've got some notes here, you can see, I need my break even on my four cell to be around the three, $300 area, it's not at the moment, it's because there's some swap overnight interest rates to, to take into consideration, even though te technically I'm on the zero on the yellow line at the moment, uh, but I, I don't like losing anything, so <laughs> may consider pivoting, close the four cell and take a new fourth buy, something like that, so if I get a buy signal. At the moment, setting up a possible bullish, hidden bullish divergence, like a lot of things. So that's that. New Zealand USD is, yeah, it's not done well at all. So I took a sell, started all back here, and yeah, just sideways, a lot of trades, you can see them all there. Um, this would have been a good standalone buy if the buy, the MACD platinum was below the zero level, it wasn't and took a sell up here and it's just gone sideways. Here's my overall break even. This green dash line is the 60 cent level. That's a big number in the New Zealand USD. So ideally I want to see price come down, hit that 
But at the moment, guess what's forming, setting up possibly? Hidden, bullish, divergence. I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but it's happening everywhere. Just the way it is, and I like hidden divergence. USD CAD. All uh, right, what have we got here? Uh, yeah, break evens, just getting up there. All right, so we're in a buy, sell, buy, sell, buy. Break even levels there, it's not getting there. Again, yeah, it just needs to push up. We have got a um, possible hidden bearish divergence setting up here. So, yeah. MACD platinum's above the zero level, so looking to sell. It's a pair that gives me grief. I'm nearly getting close to recovering all my losses on it. I'm still minus $30 on it. So between that and the Aussie, I think, Japanese yen, they're my two problem pairs when it comes to profit. It's, I don't know why I'm having trouble trading the USD CAD. I have done since I've started these daily charts. All right, uh, this is a busy pair. This is one pair that is giving me grief. I, I know I've said that about a few pairs, but this is one that is. USD, Swiss franc. Normally with the USD, Swiss franc and the Euro, USD, they, they're inversely correlated. So when one goes one way, the other generally goes the other way. I'm making pretty good money on the Euro, USD, but I'm not making any money on the USD, Swiss franc. Not sure why, but it's just been ugly and hard work. Look at all these trades. You can read all my notes. Uh, every time I pivot to the other side, it just reverses on me. So the green line up here is parity. So it's 1.0. You can see it's hit there a few times and it just dropped away. Now, trying to get up to these yellow lines, that's where all my break evens are. It's just eventually we'll get on the right side of this and we'll start picking off these trades. But in the meantime, if it keeps going like this, it's just I'm just trying to get on the right side of it and it's it's been hard going. So it is one pair I'm going to have to spend a fair while on trying to clear. But in the meantime, we just try and see what we can get and add to the prof profit to, to date sort of thing and just try and chip away at it. One ugly pair. USD Japanese Yen. Uh, what have we got here? We've got a sell up here, which has got a stop in place, which is great. We've got a buy in here, which is going nowhere fast. And it's got a stop in place down there too. So I've got a stop and we've got a support level. This yellow uh, line is overall break even. And because we're net plus 0 0.01, as long as price remains above that, zero, um, that yellow dash line, both trades, I could close them and be overall profitable. So it's not a bad pair to trade the old USD Japanese yen generally. And it's just sort of a steady mover most of the time. You can see it's nice moves up and down, up and down. You could just about trade the just the QMP dot on this pair. Um, and then we got the Corona. <laughs> yeah, so ugly. It's really stuffed up a lot of charts, especially when it comes to technical analysis on the, the higher time frames. But, you know, if you're on the one-hour chart, all this stuff would be way back here on the left-hand side. So it'd be, everything would have reset by now. Just taking a while for the daily charts to catch up, that's all. So that's it for the daily charts, guys. Um, like I said, everyone's more than welcome to join the Facebook group. And the, there's a results spreadsheet. The link to that is in the description of the video. So thanks for watching. And if you do like the videos, please subscribe or if nothing else, hit the like button. That'd be greatly appreciated. And if anyone's got any questions, just drop me a an email. You can either go to the website, which you can see up there. There's a contact form there. Or just send an email to admin at jagfx.com or just hit me up on either Facebook or um, Telegram or via the YouTube channel. So thanks to everyone. Subscribe to the channel. Much appreciated. And I'll chat later. Cheers.